Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mirchevich, the alternate historian. A certain term has returned to the American political discussion. It's called America First. Where does it originally come from? In 1940, an organization known as the America First Committee was formed to keep America out of World War II. It was headquartered in my hometown of Chicago, and at its height it claimed 800,000 members in 450 chapters. Today, the organization is associated with fascism, and examples of that belief can be seen in Philip Ross' alternate history, The Plot Against America. To be fair, at its heart, the AFC was a non-interventionist organization made up of Americans disillusioned by World War I and wanting a return to the foreign policy expressed in George Washington's farewell address, where he warned Americans about getting involved in European entanglements. Members of the AFC also came from a wide variety of political backgrounds, such as Democrats, Republicans, and Socialists. Famous supporters included Walt Disney, JFK, Gore Vidal, Frank Lloyd Wright, Gerald Ford, and Sinclair Lewis. That being said, there were many members who had fascist sympathies or were anti-Semitic, like the AFC spokesperson, the aviator Charles Lindbergh, who was an avowed admirer of Nazi Germany. Although Lindbergh expressed sympathy for the Jews persecuted in Germany, in a famous speech he blamed Jewish Americans, who he accused of infiltrating American businesses and media, for making things worse for Jewish Germans by driving America toward war. Christ, Chuck, why don't you just stick to flying? In the end, the AFC failed to keep America out of the war after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The AFC disbanded a few days later, and in an official statement said, Our principles were right. Had they been followed, war could have been avoided. No good purpose can now be served by considering what might have been. Oh boy, do I disagree. So let's ask ourselves the question, what if the America First Committee had kept America out of World War II? Well, for starters, you need to prevent the attack on Pearl Harbor. The AFC was primarily focused on keeping the United States out of a European war, not an Asian war. Japanese atrocities in China and their occupation of French into China angered many Americans, which forced President Franklin Delano Roosevelt to set an oil embargo on Japan. Since Japan imported 80% of its oil from the United States, this was a big deal to the Japanese military. It convinced their leaders to risk war with America to secure a supply of oil in the Dutch East Indies. Still, if the AFC gets more sympathetic politicians in Washington, it's possible that the oil embargo would never happen and Japan never would have attacked the United States. But that still leaves us with Nazi Germany. Roosevelt sent aid to Britain and the Soviet Union after the passage of the Lend-Lease Act. This led to an American involvement in the Battle of the Atlantic, since the Navy had to protect American convoys from German U-boats, despite the fact that neither nation was officially at war. Even if the AFC is somehow able to get Congress to reject Lindley's, or else interventionists, like Roosevelt, aren't there to champion the defense of Britain, German submarine warfare would eventually lead to the death of American merchantmen, so war may still be inevitable. But let's assume the AFC keeps America out of the war. What happens next? Well, American weapons and supplies did prove vital to the British, especially at the Second Battle of El Alamein, where America's new Sherman tanks were redirected to North Africa to shore up the reeling British army in Egypt. If those tanks never arrived, the Germans could have won the battle and would go on to threaten Egypt, the Suez Canal, and the Middle Eastern oil fields. Such a defeat might have caused Britain to kick Winston Churchill out of office and seek a negotiated peace with Germany. With Britain out of the war, Germany could turn its entire attention on the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union was a large nation with ample resources, industry, and a population willing to fight. But as Dale Cozart has said, World War II was a team effort. Without Allied material support or their troops distracting Germany and other theaters, the Soviet Union could fall. If so, the isolationist United States would find itself the last democratic power in a world dominated by two fascist empires with no respect for human life. I find it hard to believe that the United States would be safe in this world. Isolation only really works if everyone else is willing to leave you alone. While it's possible that America's oceans and military would protect them from invasion, what about nuclear weapons? Would mutually assured destruction keep everyone safe, or would the victorious Axis powers be more willing to push the big red button? It would be hard to be plausible if I continued to speculate, but I think you get my point. Although I do have the benefit of hindsight, I believe the America First Committee was a misguided organization, with its reputation ruined by the anti-Semites in their ranks. If they had their way, the world would be a darker place, and America would still be threatened by war. Nevertheless, I can understand why people think a return to America First is a good idea. No one likes war, and maybe America's recent foreign policy has created enemies. Still, isolation is not a practical solution in today's globalized world. America's entrance into World War II, not its refusal to fight, put the United States on the road to greatness by becoming the leader of the free democracies. America wasn't perfect then, and still isn't now, but turning our back on the world in the face of violence and oppression wasn't a solution in the 1940s, and it isn't a solution today. Well, that's all i got to say on this subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, or support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, the alternate historian. Bye.